Welcome to the Dobsonian Power Night Session, Saturday night, summertime. This is wonderful, clear sky, no wind, and we have a telescope outside, which we call the King. The King. The King. It's basically this 12-inch Dobsonian telescope, affordable and accessible to anyone, over an equatorial platform to track the sky. The telescope over this tool tracks the sky because this moves with the sky. And we are also using a ZWO294 camera to reach the objects in a way that we can't do with our human eyes. For instance, to watch the colors of the objects and many other objects that we just can't see them. We will be using tonight the this filter which is a filter for light pollution, a, a soft filter to allow us to combat the light pollution that we have here. By the way, we have Bortal 5 which is a medium level of light pollution, small cities, cities around, some light, light lights from the street and we are streaming from the south of Europe. Planet Earth, continent, Europe, country, Portugal, region, Algarve, 37 latitude, Bortal 5. So stay with us because we are right now watch the sky in real time. We will get a trip to Antares, to a complex of nebulae, very rare, and very difficult to watch around the star Antares which is low in the sky because it's so a southern almost south uh, positioned in the sky hello Fred Led, hello Joe Russ, star guy with guests greetings from Portugal to you and all the guests Joaquin, Fred Led, star guy, Puna, Antonio Cortez I hope you're having a great, great weekend. David Woods, Christoph, Jim, Dave's, Dave, David Woods, Samir from Islas Canarias. Should be warm there also. Quasar, everybody's welcome. And let's right now watch the telescope outside. It's this, it's the king. The king. the king. You can see it there. Tonight I, I forgot yesterday, but tonight I placed the light shield, which will help us. And without wind, this works fine. If it's too windy, I take it off this light shield because this kind of telescope is a 12-inch aperture. It means this diameter. It's a it's bigger than 12 inch, but the mirror inside at the bottom has 12 inch of diameter. Which means it's a good aperture and it's over a rocker. It moves up and down, left and right. It's called the Dobsonian Telescope and it's all over the equatorial platform to track the sky. We have only a single cable here that you see connecting the camera which is in the focuser of the telescope and this laptop that I'm working inside. So yesterday I installed SharpCap, the old version, it didn't work, but it was only a matter of restarting it. A simple thing. Anyway, I have it installed as a plan B if this doesn't work, but we are hoping the software, the new version, better version of SharpCap to allow us to, to watch what's passing with a in the camera right here on the telescope. As I change the filter for the better new Dimium, I have to refocus. So I will point straight away to Antares to focus the telescope, to balance the telescope. And uh, the reason I'm using the better new Dimium and not a filter like yesterday, a quad band filter, it's because this quad band filter it's much uh, narrow. It cuts a loads of light to let pass only certain waves. This one that I'm using it's a broadband filter. It means that it cuts only a bit of light 
of the sky to allow us to watch the nebula without having too much light pollution which is a problem all of us have or most of us have in near the cities hello anthony 4k star guy 4k it's wonderful to watch the sky through a 4k television i have one and i love it just love it well let's move on ah i also this is a bit technical but i also took today at the afternoon new flats these uh, files that we take during the day will help us hopefully to have a better image a better background so hopefully they will work we'll see we'll see let me place the camera here for you to watch me doing my stuff outside which is similar for to the stuff that you do if you have this kind of telescopes replace the sound and let's first point to Antares and connect the platform it's what I'm going to do by the way this is called star hopping start hopping Get free resources and links to the gear I use at dobsonianpower.com So first connect the platform and reset it, reset it. Now point to Antares. There. The tail wrap. And the finer scope. These are the caps. These are the caps. Now this is Antares, the star, and usually, usually when you, we change filters, we have to refocus. So I will refocus with a remote, which is a, a small device that I have here. It's a remote, you see, simple remote with infrared and I will click on the buttons to get the spikes of this star aligned and perfect. With a Dobsonian telescope or a Newtonian telescope, as it has the spikes, these spikes are caused by the veins, the spider veins, which hold at the top of the telescope the other mirror, the small one, the secondary mirror. So they are in the path of the light and that's why we have these four diffraction spikes. Which, by the way, I love it. Some people don't like the diffraction spikes and use some upgrades to, to get rid of them, but actually I love it. 
I love them. It uh, reminds me the Hubble images that uh, being a reflector telescope it has also the spikes. I think it's focused. Yes it is. This is focused, collimated and the mirror is cleaned. It was cleaned a few days ago. So now we zoom out. See, perfect. This was a new AP down here. And now I will point, let's see on Stellarium, let's open Stellarium because this uh, star has a complex of nebulae around which are very difficult to capture. Besides, we have uh, a small field of view, so we can't watch everything. So this is at south, you see very low, and Aries is at 25 degrees of altitude. And there's a bunch of nebulosity here. Actually, we have around Antares this yellowish nebula. We have here this red one. And we have here what they call the Dark River, which is the, the first one that we're going to try to capture. Which is beautiful, this dark uh, nebula. And here, this bluish nebula also. And also we have here at the right, it's, this is full of, of objects. And we have the blue horse head nebula also here, which is super difficult also. The thing is, as we are using this setup, we have only on camera this space, this real estate. So you can see clearly that the blue horse head nebula, it's not for this telescope. I want to, to test the the refractor I have behind me, this small refractor, which has a large, much wider field of view. But as tonight is one of those rare nights, as yesterday was, without any wind, which is a, a, an handicap for the 12 inch, the large Dobsonians, I want to take um, the opportunity to use the King, the 12 inch, in these nights and leave the refractor to nights, to windy nights, which are frequent here. So, and actually with more aperture of the 12 inch, we can get more detail, although in a smaller area. So I will try, and there is, it's very easy, it's there. I will try maybe this part here first, which has the dark nebula and try to center this star and try to capture the challenge is and the goal is the goal is to try to make it pop here to distinguish the blue and gray and the dark which uh, belongs to this dark river they call in this nebula and then we will study just a, a bit of this complex of nebula Okay, so to do that, you will see me outside doing the star hopping. Basically, I have a tail rod, which is a finder, and it will be very easy because I just have to point the tail rod. This represents the circles that has the tail rod finder, and I will just have to make a tangent with the outer circle of the tail rod, and more or less I will point it. It will not be on vertical, but all, almost and more or less do this, a bit to the right, and I will be near this, this, uh, this star that I want to, to center. To help me centering this star as the tail rod, mm, with the tail rod I might not see this small star, I will use the help of the finder scope, which I have uh, also in the telescope, this one, to zoom it a bit and uh, watch the star from there, hopefully, I don't know. This pattern has three stars, this part here will be easier, but I will take these three stars as a reference and this Antares, which is super bright, so it's easy to see. 
as another reference to triangulate that and find this small star i'm relating i'm i'm talking about what i'm going to do right now outside the action yes overhead uh, another horse head but it's the blue horse head no david i didn't try mosaics because i don't like very much to to do that kind of uh, work hmm. i don't mind to have them separated okay so let's place the camera like this for me to see this then when i point uh, to the right place i will cover the security camera which is pointing to the telescope and there's infrared which mess with the image of the camera and of course all of this using the dobsonian power dobsonian power If you're enjoying the show, remember to give it a like to spread it all over the world. Reset again at the platform to start from scratch. many stars there so this is the cluster let's compare with stellarium this is the cluster probably uh. nope i can see six, uh, five stars there one two three One, two, three, four, five. It's at the middle. Larium. I see the five stars like this and it's near between these four okay 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 I think we are there and as we can see these two stars here should be these two stars here so I will center I will center right now hold on show you here See here, these two stars should be these.
Delirium again. Delirium. See the best position. Yeah. Now I will cover the camera and you will see the difference. Actually, it's funny that with this filter we see no difference. No? Let me see. This is the, the new D. I will take off. I will take off. But it might be because we are pointing, we are not pointing to the direction of the camera. We are, po are pointing towards the opposite side, to south. So then I will place, point the camera as I did yesterday with the other filter near the, to, almost to the, the security camera to check if uh, it cuts or not. I can see now that uh, if I point to the opposite side, it will not mess in case I forget to, to cover like I did it. Good. Now let's live stack with my new, with my new sequences. Which is eight seconds with a new demon, for instance. Let's see if the flats work. Okay, now we wait. We have to wait a bit because this is uh, very hard. Well, I, I'm watching something here, so it will work. And it's low in the sky, it's over the ocean. So it has uh, the influence of the, the haze. We can barely see something already with only 48 seconds. It's forming. Each 8 seconds we'll have another image over and over and over and over stacking for us to, to see more detail. Thanks Christoph! Yes, people from the north of Europe, I try to to do the live streams not too late to get you here, but I understand that uh, you have different time zones. It's too late there. So let's remember our goal right now our goal is something like this this is a supposed to be a good image so to see if we can distinguish these dark filaments here from the blue we'll see what happened It seems like the flats are not working very well.
This time I did, uh, for the ones that know about flats and darks, this time I did flats. This, this that I'm using is without uh, darks, but usually the one I use is with dark, with a dark file associated. But I have it. I can change it. Hey, Martin! Thanks, Joaquin. My finder, my finder is uh, IPC is removable. Yes, it's a good finder. Hey, Stephen, greetings to United Kingdom. Thanks, thanks for your words. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiration. Hello, Astrocade. Hello, Martin. Well, we can see that he's forming. This is a very tough nebula to capture, but we already can see. Let me readjust this for us to see it better. filter the noise reduction filter is not working as i wish i can see the flats are also okay i will pull another flat file to see but we can see clearly already the dark river dark river because i'm taking this opportunity to to test those Flats, those calibration frames we called. Let me change this one. So neodymium, neodymium with no darks, and now I will apply neodymium with darks and see which one is better. You see this circle here was not supposed to be here so let's clear and reset this start all over again with a different calibration frame which we will see if it works better let's readjust this or if it's the same we have to wait again for the stacking Yes, we can offer head. I think it's the same. The flats that uh, I used or I did without applying darks at the same time when I capture the flats are the same. They, it, they have the same effect here. Lunch time there. <laughs> it's funny because we are all, all from different parts of the planet. And each one has I dinner already. Here is quarter past 11 p.m. This is very stable when we have this all green means that it's stable 
the mount, the telescope. Just here. This region as it is very low in the sky. It's very noisy also. And it's very hot. Very, very hot here. Outside, uh, I, I will tell you, the camera is with a mini cooler and even like that it's a 32. Today, when I took the flats, it was at 42 or 41, something like that. Too much, too much. Maybe it's because of that, I don't know, that this pattern here, this gradient, didn't work because the camera is... I didn't touch anything. No flat? No, it is uh, applying. It's not working, this, this flat, I don't know why. I have another one, but we'll try in the next one. The first one, now I reset it, but the first one looked better, less noisy. This has to be with uh, the atmosphere, basically. Look, this is a nebula that is... at 25 degrees altitude. It's very, very low. Look, very, very low in the sky. It's like this. And you can see the telescope, the position of the telescope. Whoops. It's very... Near horizontal. Oh, it's covered, of course. Right now it's covered. A good beer and enjoying the show. I was going to, to ask you. Because you said you will place the 10 inch. Need more working on that. No focus. No focus. No focus. Why is that? If you don't have focus, it's because you need to add something. Likely to add something. An extension or something. And right now the color is better. This was... We are, were photobombed here by a new AP or a satellite or something. Hello, Carl. Let me try with uh, the old. That I used yesterday. It seconds. I resetted it to see if it works better. The old uh, sequence. They are see they all seem to get some gradient around. No focuser is not good. What what? You have to buy a new focuser. 
with extensions underneath or off moving or moving the primary mirror up. It's cheaper to move the primary mirror up. But if the focuser you say is not good. Buy a low profile one. When you buy the focuser, buy a lot a low profile, which will help in that in those situations. Because to have focus outwards, it's easy. You just have to have the stuff, extensions or something. But inwards. It's funny, this vignetting here still appear where whatever the, the flats I apply. Let's see another part of this nebula. There's one that is more... Um, how to say... There's a bit more color, is this one. I just have to pull the telescope up, so it will be an easy thing to do. So the first goal, we kind of do it, did it, because we could see the the dark river, which continues now in the, the upper part of the nebula. It's the uh, Raw of Yukush. If you like this kind of content, remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with videos and live streams. There we go. There we go. Okay. This one we should see it better it's funny when i point south it's much easy to how do you mean to have this uh, balance it Low profile. moving a bit let me clear but i was watching it's starting to pop from here from around these three stars but this is moving i don't know why because i see the stars oh it's fine Odin, the, the Dwarf 2 is an excellent tool. This one. As a portable tool. Any other telescope, we want aperture. And uh, any other telescope will be 
better with paired with an astro camera but if you can't or if you live in a super high polluted sky or under high polluted sky in a big city or something this is a, a way to for you to enjoy astronomy and take some pictures anywhere i don't use it for astrophotography as i do here i use it to watch the sky it does exactly the same that what i'm doing tonight here this is what we do here in this channel to watch the objects live and this do the same this stacks the images and you watch them stacking and, and evolving getting sharper and more beautiful then if you want as here if you want you save a, a file a picture file at the end and then you can post process them so you yes you can do astrophotography but the advantage is the portability the big advantage of the dwarf it's the portability i just use the dwarf except for doing videos and funny things like the video i i uploaded today in the channel with the flamingos to watch it was an adventure it was not i'm not a photographer i never was a photographer and i i will not be a photographer so uh, i took this to watch flamingos because I wanted to go there and it was a, a good tool to take with me. And it was a funny thing to do. People that think that I was, my goal was to be a photographer and take a, no, no, <laughs> no, that's not my goal. The goal is to have fun in the night sky, but as I, he, he does that uh, it has that feature of uh, of doing daylight photography i wanted to try at least once with the flamingos was a nice try but it was more a funny uh, a sequence of funny moments than uh, a work of a photographer <laughs> Yes, it's a nice entry level. Here I don't I don't uh, like uh, astrophotography. I do a quick astrophotography here. So to be clear, and I insist this one uh, uh, night after night because uh, it doesn't fulfill me. You understand that? To process, post process an image of the sky doesn't fulfill me doesn't have any value to me it's uh, a work of uh, software it doesn't uh, i understand that that's to other people as many things many hobbies many tastes we are all different all equal but to me no what really here we in this channel what we do is to watch these objects in real time and to understand what we are watching which is what i'm going to to do right now not the the picture the final picture that's what fulfill me what connects me with the sky with the universe and that's what uh, adds me knowledge which i think it's relevant for my life for my, my as a human being not to have the best picture as I said, I never was a photographer. A photographer, it's, uh, it's a natural way or path in life to be a photographer in the past and now be an astrophotographer or both, for instance. Not for me. Yes, it is. Actually, I did some solar imaging and sometimes I do. And it was uh, very nice, yes. And for the moon, even during the day. I did it during the day and it was great. So it start to trying to to pop here around the, the three stars. 
This is the row of Yukus, I think. Yeah. Of Yuki. Here we can see in NASA picture all the patterns. We are watching a small region here for you to have the, the notion of the dimension of all of this. We can watch well, very well the cluster. If I point there, we'll see in a minute. Of Yuki. Of Yuki. The many spectacular colors of row of, of Yuki. Clouds. Highlight the many processes that occur there. The blue regions shine primarily by reflected light. So this blue regions is light which is reflected. They are not emitting. That's why it's a reflection nebula. Actually, I think with a, a simple infrared cut filter will be better, even better than the new dim here. The Earth, the Earth's daytime sky appears blue for the same reason, of, of course, the reflection. Blue light from the row of Yuki star system and nearby stars reflects more efficiently of this portion of the nebula than the red light. The red and yellow regions, these ones yellow here near Antares, and the red the red and yellow regions shine primarily because of emission notice emission from the nebulous atomic and molecular gas light from nearby blue stars more energetic than the bright star Antares knocks electrons away from the gas which then shines when the electrons recombine with the gas and the dark brown regions are caused by dust grains so all of these, that the dark river all of this that you can see here is caused by dust that's why I say the infrared cut filter should be better because it's the best filter I have it's so soft, so soft that lets pass all of these brownish color of the dust regions we adjust this and you see that the more we stack the more nebulosity try to pop we adjust colors And then we have the M4 cluster, globular cluster of stars here, a beautiful cluster. And it's uh, interesting because uh, these clouds, this row of Yuki clouds, complex of clouds, emits light in every wavelength band from the radio to the gamma ray interesting this is a very very complex of nebula Ro Ophiuki I'm sorry about that. Join us. By the way, don't forget the ones that are new here that you can join us on Discord and uh, keep uh, the interaction there after the streams. 
Join us on Discord, it's free and you can keep in touch with the Dobsonian Power community. This reminds me the um, that winter cluster or nebula, the um, Christmas tree cluster. It's very similar the way it's very hard for the the dog to capture without uh, being here loads of time. We capture only a part of it. Will be interesting to use this with um, the refractor to see what happens. Doing live stacking, not post processing. Just to, to do this. I'll save this one. Yes, we have a uh, and despite I have the the Nexus which increase the, the, the field of view and the ZW to ninety-four. We will need a um, larger field of view and be here waiting and waiting and waiting. And now we can go. Let me see what we have here. But anyway, it's an interesting region to, to watch. This, I, I bet this one we can capture better and the, the crab globular cluster it will be easy let me see yes i just do like this to antares we can see the m4 let's go to m4 restart this hold on Very hard to center. Very hard to center with a large doll, but this is enough. This is the cluster, the M4. And the clusters, the star clusters, look, this is without stacking anything. Now we will stack. We can stack with um, four seconds. We want smaller exposures. Just the color. You can see that it shines bright. These kind of objects are very, very good to watch visually, even with the moon. But without moon, it's even better. 
they shine like diamonds very very nice yay yay short exposures and the object pops immediately and we adjust here the sky outside it's like blurred look the gradient again the atmosphere is i think it's the um, the heat that comes from the ground and uh, the more we get into the the night the better it it turns because it loads of uh, heat during the the day from the sun hits the ground and then during the night it goes up Yes, yeah, CAA opens uh, loads of opportunities. Except this kind of objects. Globular clusters are one of the my preferred to watch through eyepieces. Planets, the moon, the, the Orion Nebula. It's a very beautiful nebula. The ring, the dumbbell. Actually, we can point to the dumbbell. I think it's... Yeah, the mill, uh, I didn't see it yet this year. Dumbbell. It's at 41, it's a good altitude already. Do you like the dumbbell? Is this nebula good for narrow band? The dumbbell? I don't know. What do you think? Tell me in the chat community. Hello Damien! Is this nebula good for narrow band, or do you think this filter, the, um, the Bader Neodymium softer one broadband, it's better? Hey, Steve Miller! Which C? Neodymium. Yeah, I think so. The narrow band is for this, the eagle and so on. Okay. Dumbbell will be like... I can see this star. I can see Vega. I think I can see this star. One, two, three. I hope I have the go-to working. The go-to, the, the push-to of Shark Cup. I, I remember how I captured the, the dumbbell. I make a, a rectangle here. From this star to the, the cent cent central one, to this one, I can see these three stars. One, two, three. I imagine a, a, um, a rectangle. And I point more or less there. That's the trick. That's the trick. Let's do it. By M4. And let's go to the Dumbbell Nebula. I think I saved this. Let me save. Just for the record. So now I will stretch this. It will be super bright to watch the Nebula. Or not, if I use the push tool. Let me see if it works from here. No, I think I have to point there first. I don't know. I will try to point there and then I will try. So again, we will do... The... Start hoping. hoping. For you to watch me start hopping and see that this is all real this is not me posting pictures here eh? this is all real 
گارس This show is sponsored by AstroArt Finland, your astronomical partner. Now we will do the test of the infrared. a little bit pointing there we have to use the cap i will need a, a bit of dark adaptation to watch the stars so i'll close this reset the platform again each object we reset the platform Now is when the push to is very, very good to help. Let's see. Push to. Uh, Dumb. Well. M27. Start. Let's hope this works. I will wait a, wait a bit. Because it takes more time than the older one. Let's wait a bit for it to solve and basically the software is trying to figure where is pointing the telescope in the sky. funny in the older software it solved much faster i have it here installed yes you love to see me struggling <laughs> you don't need a push to Oh, but then I, I start, and it's hot, I start, uh, because it's the live stream, I have that pressure. The pressure. And I start uh, sweating and... But it's not solving this. Not solving. Yesterday I remember that it took time. I can do it manually, but uh, it's the the old way I I did always. Let me open the the old software. It's not working. I see. Let me open the old one to see. 
have it here. This is the the one that's not better. The the original one. See it it imported everything, so everything is here. Not the new ones. Okay, I will hold on. I will pull the sequence. So it's four seconds near the immune. See if it works. The camera is not connected. We'll connect the camera first. Now it's working, it's working. Let's see the difference. If the problem is the software or not. If it is, I will tell Robbie. Okay. No, I don't want to stack. 294. Okay, this was the old uh, way that we do. Now let's try. Tools. Ah, this doesn't have the push too. Ah, but it has the old-fashioned way. Okay, hold on. I have this here. The free push tool that I have. Okay, let's try. Connect. Now, dumbbell. Control 1. The telescope will be here. Here we go. Here. And now, this was how I worked before. And now, I could be here. Open scope controls and do the plate solving. Let's see if it works or if it's the same. Can be the sky. It's uh, kind of blurred. I don't know. I have no idea. But it's taking time again. Pureta. <laughs> it's the same. It's weird. It's the same. Oh god, I will have to do it manually. And before, yes, I will move a bit. I will move a bit and we'll see. We'll find it easily. It's the old way. And before I have this on on SharpCap, what I do, what I did was to take a snapshot, upload to astrom3.net, wait a bit, and clear. It was my my old way to do. No, this is not a problem. This could be the sky or something. I have no idea. I will close. I will open again the new. The new sharp cap, so I can see that the old sharp cap acts the same way. I remember in the past I installed Astro Tortilla, but now I have its ANSVR or something like that. Can be that. I don't know. That's those kind of things I really I don't like. The drivers and. and Let's try another thing first before I I go to you throw me to the lions. Let's just stretch this and try again the the push two. It's the dumbbell M27. Up 
state mount position with plate solve results. I think I have to leave this unchecked. Start. Let's see now. The last last chance. It's funny how it worked so fine. Could be also the as I have more light pollution. It's a coincidence that it start working bad after I have more light pollution with the LED. The street light lights, the new ones. Uh, about 25. It's sad because yesterday we had uh, fireworks and I was watching with my kids and my wife and uh, we noticed the Milky Way much fainter. It's very, very sad for us. Well, if this doesn't work, I will move on manually and tomorrow I will try to install another software or driver or whatever they call the catalog to see if it works better. Astro Tortilla. I tried to install Astro Tortilla but it didn't uh, install, I don't know why. Rex on port, what does it mean? Yes, I have everything enabled. Yes, Tiago. <laughs> and it uh, it will have to be like that. Well, yeah, I will leave it anyway like this. Hoping that while I go outside. <sighs> Patterns. I will see in the finder. One, two, three stars, probably. Many stars here. I'll try to search this group of stars. One, two, three. I'm preparing my brain to the star hopping. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two here, two here. Three in a row here. Okay. I could see these stars here. These two, but I can't. Now everything is washed out. So Vega, Vega, it's here. The Telrad will be... One, two and a half. One two two tail rats down attention to this star not a tangent like this down okay let's go <laughs> watch if uh, we see it if you see it then you tell me. These two are it watch me suffering. This is with sound. Okay. Okay. Let's do the star hope. Star hopping.
Three stars, four stars. One, two, three, four. I will move the telescope. I will move the stars Now have. like to see me suffer. See. It's the right position.
I'm close to it. I'm close. I'm close. I'm, close. I'm, I'm close. pretty sure. Hold on. Right. One, two, three. One, two. Now I'm using the finer scope because I think I'm in uh, the area. I'll find soon. Yeah. Yeah. The old fashioned method. The time that we had no electronics, only a telescope and human eyes. Against all light pollution, let me put the cap. Against all the light pollution. And the obstacles. Yes, good feeling. And better feeling than a go-to. It's true, it's true. I saw that partner. We need a bit of dark adaptation to start watching better the, the stars. Then I saw this. I will tell you what I saw in the finder. I saw... So you can do it by yourself. The finder has a larger, a wider field. So I saw these three stars here. And then this here. Just moved a bit. Okay, let's do it. The first dumbbell of the year for me with the 12 inch. How do you mean? And the dumbbell revealed itself from the darkness, well, from the darkness, no, from the light pollution. The eight seconds are not working. Oh, now works. Just the, the colors. Beautiful. So bright and detail right away. The power of the Dobsonian. Dobsonian power. power. It's 
so much detail in 24 seconds only. Incredible. And now it will get more and more detail. For this one, this bilateral filter or nothing. I'll leave nothing. Ian Sharp mask. No bilateral filter. Cleans a bit the noise. I'll leave it with nothing. Pure. The camera I'm using is the 294 MC color, not cooled. Well, actually I have a mini cooler, but it only lowers about five degrees. It's right now a 31.9. I use that, that mini cooler to keep it hopefully low, uh, lower than 30, but it's too hot outside. And the filter I'm using is the Bader Neodymium. Sky, moon and Sky Glow filter, 2 inch, which is a light pollution filter, very soft light pollution filter. And it seems, let me see the, the hole, it seems enough. Now, it, it's interesting, now the, the flats are working, so that means, because now I'm pointing upper in the sky and it's not over the ocean. That gradient could be a mix of uh, the clouds of the nebula of the nebulosity and uh, mix it with the atmosphere at low altitude over the ocean because i saw haze also and heat uh, this is a albeit is a um, busy a busy zone of the sky with full of stars it's much clear and it's above the, the city, but it's higher now. Let me see the, um, the altitude. 50, 50, it's perfect. 50, it's already much better over the city. Then if I point like I did the, the last live streams to 30 degrees, it's still near the glow of the city. It should be some glow, but this filter, the Bader Neodymium, is enough for it to handle it. And uh, as we can see clearly. This is the central star. And we start watching these filaments of the hydrogen. The red is the hydrogen. Let's see what he can pull from the rest of the nebula. be <laughs> the package could be in a quantum level or something and it's a, an interesting thing let me read you first Yeah, we, we didn't figure it out. Nobody. And it seems that we are not close to, to figure it out from what I'm listening from other scientists. Different parts of the science. 
I, I like a lot that um, I put you another question <clears throat> from another perspective if the information can't my physical classic physical if the information can't be destroyed right it can't be destroyed the information well Stephen Hawkins uh, was doubting before he passed away about the information inside the, um, the black holes but later science already they didn't figure it out but uh, they suspect the, the black holes somehow they split they spit the information they, they push the information out somehow so let's assume that physics the classical physics is right the information can't be destroyed any information right so now if the information can't be destroyed what about the information that we are accumulating with our life experience that is in our brain what about that information at the quantum level the subatomic level what about that information? Is there? Is there the information? You can argue, okay, but someone that gets diseases like Alzheimer, they can't remember a part of, a, of, of the brain. But at a subatomic level, the information is there. It's physics. It, that's that's uh, an evidence, no? That, that's proved. The information is there. information everything that we, we think we pass it's information it's all information at, at a, a subatomic level it's it's there how can you remember it's because you pull the information the information exists no If the information exists inside of our brain at a quantum level and it can't be destroyed all the rest which is material will be transformed no after we pass away in ashes and the information where does the the information goes to information of red it's in physics it's not me everything everything is information where it goes towards is it consciousness Does it blend with the universe? It cannot be stored unless the brain is intact, so it is lost. But it's lost to where? Lost means anywhere. But it exists. Still exists, no? Something from us still exists. It's what you are telling me. But it's lost. That's your answer. Yeah, but that in DNA and re uh, RNA, they do it already. They can't, but they do it already. It's another stuff. What's happening with... Uh, with my dumbbell? Trying to pull more nebulosity here at the, um, the poles, the poles, the top and the bottom. I'll save one image just in case.
exactly. First, I'm sorry about that. And a specialist told us it is a like it is like a vast library, but the doors to each section have been locked, even though even though the books are still there. But I said that because uh, of uh, logical thinking. I didn't know that. But it's so evident, so clear. It's looking great, no? Why not? Why, why is not information? Why it isn't information, the experience? It's like a movie with frames, your life and mine. So the information is there. And if you remember when you are younger and healthy and beautiful, you pull that information from somewhere. This is getting jerky, the telescope. I don't know why. Could be some wind. Because it's personal and not communicable, but that that doesn't prove that it's not information or it's in somewhere. But that's another thing. When you and me share a moment of reality, your reality and mine right now are connected. That's we are sharing information here. No? And when you go to the street and you go to the to the bar or to the, the store, you are sharing information with the guy or the girl in the store. That moment in time, your reality with his or her reality. That's different. That's sharing information. But your information, the one that it's here, that library, where does it go when we pass away? Everything transforms in ashes, whatever. But that at quant a quantum level, at a subatomic level, where does it go? We don't. <laughs> we don't, of course. is getting the mount is getting with reds here Arms. According to science, no. According to physics, it's not me that I'm saying that. According to physics, no. You can't destroy the information. You say lost, lost, but lost what is lost? Lost, that doesn't mean destroyed. It's still there. Lost, but still there. When you lost yourself, you still exist. You are only lost. Nobody knows the answer, of course. 
<clears throat> but the, it's an interesting thing to to think about i listen i saw in <clears throat> some scientists that although they say we can because the the interviewer was pushing in although they can't say and they say clearly we don't know we just can speculate and it's the true and uh, some of them a few think that uh, or want to think they say i want to believe i want to believe that somehow that information that i was talking about will return to the universe that we know that will return to the universe but i want to believe that somehow that information will be in another state of existence that we can't imagine i want to believe i want to believe it's different that and that they it was not penrose Yeah, but if if evaporates it transforms in ev evaporation and goes anywhere it's not destroyed and the most the the more the more close the closest thing that we have right now from physics that's what matters to us it's science the closest uh, evidence it's not right and evi it, it's uh, assumed that it's like that by science it's that information can't be destroyed science says information can't be destroyed all the information in the universe all the rest is uh, speculation but this one is physics information can't be destroyed let me see if i in the internet has something or someone information can't be destroyed cannot be destroyed in the universe loads of people i never f uh, searched on google i swear i saw interviews in the quantum world however the conservation of quantum information means that information cannot be created nor destroyed see a quantum level and then they go to the quantum mechanics theories interesting why qu quantum information can is never destroyed like holes University of Illinois quantum information conservation e physics everybody study this in science or you're not watching determinism you are talking about determinism I just made a, a simple a simple search and it pops right away University of Illinois life science life science is a publication okay but the, the university it's not a publication they are studying scientific American I don't know what is it it is a forum physics.org Who are they? Now 
nanotechnology, physics, art, astronomy, space, chemistry, biology. Who are they? Powered by ScienceX Network. About. Physics, technology and medical research. One of the largest online communities for science-minded people. Well, it's a community. Publishes over 200 quality articles every day. They publish pa papers, no? Was find, founded by PhD students. Looks reliable. Kind of. Harvard. No, it's about black holes. Nobody knows, of course. That's the the true, the pure, pure true. At the quantum level, of course. It's a bit jerky the amount. It's... Uh, the platform is rising. And uh, the gravity is not helping. Should be, of course, it is a mess. I have to do the polar alignment again. Let me see if the deconvolution works well here. No. As usual. Chart mask. Thanks, Carl. It's true. How many light years? This nebula? This goes, yes. It's the um, M37, no? Only... No, no, no. Yes. 1300 light years only. 7.5 magnitude. It has only... Almost 10,000 years of existence. It says here, age. I wish I could have the answers, don't you? The more we think about that...
I don't know, Sammy. Yeah, the information is not the same, but it's there. Assuming that everything can change, but can't be destroyed. See if it's still hanging on. This has 40 minutes. Oh, let's clip the Instagram. So like this. And at the end I will crop it, of course. Well. I might not balance it very well. Yeah. The magnets are at the bottom and they shouldn't be at the bottom. At the bottom they were when the telescope was like this to Antares. But now the telescope is like this. I should have moved up the magnets. Probably is why this is not... We have to readjust the magnets all the time. Sometimes I forget. I was doing star hoping, suffering, well, suffering. I enjoy a lot. But in during the live streams, we get some pressure. It's Saturday, no? We have so much to know. So much, so much. It's mind-blowing, of course. But that... Thinking in these things, it's not a crime. As many people, it's not a taboo. We are free to think. Still, we still are th free to, to think whatever we want. And thinking those things is not bad. It opens our minds. Let me check the stacking. Green again, could be wind. Yeah, <laughs> tell that to Fred Lad or off ahead. <laughs> hey, Madziv. Ooh, off ahead. The the things that I watched about time. Blows my mind. That is even worse.
it's getting weird now let me see if it stopped or not i will save one frame oh, it's still stacking but it's all over the place now Ah, it's funny. Now it's uh, after this 16 minutes already. We s we start watching here the, a bit of hydrogen here. See? Yeah, right. Right. Let me see. The name is that you said Julian Barbour. Physicist. The end of time. As in Spanish also? Is this what you are talking about? The end of time? The end of time. He said, Time is what happens when nothing else does. <laughs> But um, this was Richard. But Julian disagrees. If nothing happened, if nothing changed, then time would stop. For time is nothing but change. Change that we perceive occurring all around us, not time. Put simply, time does not exist. And they say it's a highly provocative volume. Timeless universe. Why we experience time. It strikes at the art of modern physics. Doubt on Einstein's greatest contribution. Oh, it, this will mess with a bunch of people. What they don't understand is that science is precisely that. Quantum physics. Ah, that this is oh, 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 what we all want to know. The unification of Einstein's general relativity with quantum mechanics. It's not figured it out yet. And he, he claims that that unification may well spell the end of time. He ranges from ancient, ancient philosophers, contemporary physicists, Penrose, of course, Stephen Hawking. Interesting. I'm getting lazy to read books now. I don't know if it's the age. I think I will st experiment uh, audiobooks. A lazy style. Any of you use uh, audiobooks? Or listen to audiobooks? Yes, Roman. I think I will experiment. Amazon has uh, something, but we have to have a install an application or something. Yes, nowadays the information is. Sometimes, Adam. 
I have to, to try it. Audiobook, you can uh, go to the beach or something and just place the audiobook or the, the device and listen while you're at the beach or in the nature or something. Samir didn't like it. I like to read. I'm I'm lazy to read now. Well, I read a lot. But read a book. As we used to do. As I used to do. YouTube. <laughs> Audible is good. Uh, the voice reading... It depends if it's a good voice. I listen to about six a month. Wow, I don't watch the and me neither. TV is a uh, is crap. I feel insulted when I watch TV. You need to find an audiobook with a good voice, uh, of course, because they contract that a narrator. I can read be irritated by the voice of the reader unless he or she is a trained actor okay i see the point i will be careful well but i, I have no choice if i choose a book like this for instance to to listen now with ai i think they will actually now youtube will implement ai <clears throat> to reach you see one world one world we the path is th that one is it, it will implement ai to translate like the audiobooks in for instance my videos in all the different languages but i bet in the future i will be here talking in live live like now and the algorithms will be so and the ai will be so good that will translate automatically for Chinese, Hindi, Spanish, Portuguese, whatever. So it's it's starting. And it will be amazing because one world. Because you don't uh, watch YouTube from India, for instance. You don't understand what they say or from China or China, Japan or something. South Korea. But... With this, everybody can reach everybody. Loads of competition, of course, will increase. But it will reach one world. Not one country or one group of countries. One world. No planets? No. You wait for now for the, the deep summer. For lazy people, of course. Unlike me. Unlike me. Yes, of course, we remember Carl Sagan with the cosmos. AI will, will do that for us in the future we will have the audiobooks told by with the voice of someone that we know well they do that already it's a question of implementing you use that makes me f it, it has impact that thing of the AI voice translations because I created the Brazilian um, channel which is growing slowly growing and uh, in Spanish I myself I I translate I dub the um, the videos lots of work with that it's a bit of a, a cumbersome but I, I like to, to do that to reach more people that doesn't speak English but that will change 
I think I will send them to here to listen to me translate it with AI. But if I have to do something more specific, like a live stream in Portuguese or a live stream in Spanish, I might uh, keep the, the channels. Renato, we only speak in English here. While we don't have the AI, the AI to translate. Let me see if it stops. Yes. Okay, I will save this and then I will do it with a neat image and put it on the um, on a thumbnail. People, have an awesome rest of the weekend. It was a very pleasant night as usual. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye. See you. Thank you.